Merry Christmas from beautiful Savior Lutheran in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Thank you so very, very much for joining me for our online worship service. I know for some of you, you would much rather be in a sanctuary celebrating our Lord's birth, but whether it be due to health concerns or the weather, this is how you'll be worshiping this Christmas. And so thank you so much for joining me as we gather around the word of our Lord to celebrate the birth of our Lord, the word which has become flesh to dwell among us, to save us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Why is Christmas such a joyous time? Unto us is born in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord. Do you believe that you need a Savior? Yes, I have not let my Lord's love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. I am sorry for all of this and ask for grace. I want to do better. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ came, born of the Virgin. He was given as the Lamb of God, to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. 
And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe, wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at all those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. We have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plain And the mountains in reply
Welcome to Puppet Time with Pastor. I'm with two of my friends, Pinky, our praying pig. How you doing, Pastor? I'm really excited. The middle candle finally lit. Christmas is here. Yeah, you've been waiting all Advent, every week around the Advent wreath, and the middle candle is finally lit. And Lana, our Lutheran lamb, how are you doing this Christmas? I'm really good. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It is the most wonderful time of the year because we get to celebrate this amazing God who comes to us. Yeah, but Pastor, what pinky? I'm kind of jealous of Lana. You're kind of jealous of Lana? You're jealous of me? Why are you jealous of me? Well, when you look at all those nativity scenes, you never see pigs there, do you? No, I guess not. Why is it, Pastor? How come we never see pigs? Well, I hate to break this to you, but you were kind of considered unclean. What do you mean? I think I cleaned myself up pretty good today. Well, you did clean yourself up pretty good today. I'm not talking about having mud in that all over you. I'm talking about as far as, well, sacrifices and eating and all that. You just weren't considered, well, to be clean. Pigs were avoided. I don't know if I like that idea. Yeah, that doesn't seem very fair. Yeah, well, it's just kind of the way it was. But I'm going to tell you a secret. You know, in a wondrous way, when Jesus came to this earth, he came to make everything that is unclean, clean. So pigs really should be in the nativity scene. What do you mean by that? Yeah, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is this. I'm unclean too. So is Lana, even though that lambs are in nativity scenes all the time. What do you mean? She looks pretty clean to me. You don't look so bad either. Thank you, I appreciate that. But again, I'm not talking about outward appearance. I'm talking about what's inside, our sin. And all of us are unclean. None of us is perfect before God. And it's amazing that when Jesus came to this earth, he came, perfect God, now becoming true man, born of the virgin, to be here among everything that's unclean because of sin. But what did Jesus come to do? To clean us up. Yeah, clean us up. Exactly. That's why we celebrate the middle candle being lit. Jesus has come. He comes to be near us, even among things that are unclean. But let me tell you something else. You know, one reason you might be jealous of Lana, especially because, well, it's pretty cold outside and really windy, is because she has that nice wool coat. Yeah, I am kind of jealous. But that keeps you warm. Yeah, it sure does keep me warm. Yeah. Well, listen to this Bible passage from Isaiah 1, verse 18. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Wow. He forgives my sins and he puts wool on me? Well, not literally, I don't think. No, not literally. But he does forgive our sins, so in God's sight, we look clean. No longer unclean, but clean. And we can be his little lambs under the care of the good shepherd. And what's so important about a good shepherd, Lana? They take care of us. They love us. They lead us right where we need to be. And where does Jesus lead us where he wants us to be? With him here on this earth and eventually to heaven. Exactly. Eventually to heaven. So at Christmas, God has come down to us so we can come to him and be with him. Unclean people totally cleaned up, given the wool of little lambs now, so we can be his now and for all eternity. Yeah, all eternity. Indeed. What a great reason to keep singing some more Christmas hymns. Let's do that now.
once told that being a meteorologist is a great job because you never have to be 100% correct. Oh man, I would love that because I'm never 100% correct. Well, I want you to think back, if you will, to the Garden of Eden. And I want you to think about some words that our Lord gave Adam in Genesis chapter 2. Here's what the Lord said to Adam. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Oh, God made a forecast. God made a forecast, and guess what? It, it happened, didn't it? Because when Adam and Eve fell into sin, death came. Oh, not immediately. A lightning bolt didn't come down, but they knew that everything was different. They even looked at themselves and realized, uh-oh, we have to cover ourselves up. We don't look good. And when God came in the cool of the night, they tried to hide. Why? Because what was created to be enjoyed, life created to be enjoyed, now all of a sudden was ruined. God had made a forecast, and it was 100% accurate. But there was more to the forecast, wasn't there? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God is talking to the serpent, the one infiltrated by the evil one, the one who brought this misery as he tempted Eve and Adam. And what did God say? Another forecast, Genesis 3, 15, I, the Lord said, will put enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. How do you kill a snake? You go after its head. God's making a forecast. He's saying this is what's going to happen. There was a bad storm. Bad things happened, just like I said they would, because you did what I told you not to do. But I'm going to add to this forecast. This is what's going to happen. Someone's going to come, born of a woman, who's going to crush the evil one, who's going to give victory. That's a marvelous forecast. And it's a forecast that was given further details as time went on. Details such as this one who would come, born of a woman, would come as a descendant of Abraham, for all nations would be blessed through him. And not only that, Abraham had a son, Isaac, who had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Well, this one to come would be from Jacob's line. And Jacob had 12 sons, and the son Judah was the son through whose line this one would come that would crush Satan. And then from that line, there was someone named David, King David, the greatest king in Israel's history. But as great as he was, he died, yet God made him a promise that one of his descendants would rule on his throne forever. A much different kind of kingdom than any kind of earthly kingdom. And so the one who would come, born of a woman who would crush Satan, would be from David's line, the son of David, if you will. But there's more information. This one, this one who would be David's descendant, who would rule forever, would come born of a virgin, would be born in Bethlehem, would heal people, making sure that blind could see, lame could walk, the poor would be treated with justice. All these different things this one would come and do, but he would do something else. He would be a lamb of God, a sacrifice with the guilt of all of us on him because he would take away the sin of the world. That's God's forecast. God's forecasts are 100%. But you know what they also include? They include a 100% chance of snow. What? Well, let's remind ourselves of that beautiful passage again from Isaiah 1, verse 18. 
Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And that's what we get to celebrate this day. This God has come to you and me to fulfill his word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us so we can dwell with God as his forgiven, redeemed people. Indeed, what a joyous day. Our circumstances are what they are. And it might not have been the way we planned it. And if we were making a forecast, maybe we would not have forecasted the things that are happening to us. But God knows what's going on. He knows where we are. And more important than that, he wants you to know right where you are with him. The Lamb of God, because the perfect Lamb of God has come for you, for me. So we can be his, not just now, but for all eternity. Would you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord always look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Merry Christmas.